morning, and thank you for tuning in and joining us this evening for our Black History Month celebration, Hope, Helping Other People Every Day. I am Rosalind B. Harris, publisher of the award-winning Denver Urban Spectrum. Tonight, we will acknowledge 14 individuals as our 2022 African Americans who make a difference. We will also present a special recognition to a very special icon from the Denver community. And we will be entertained by three performers who have a special message for all the honorees. But first, I would like to introduce our host for the evening, Quincy Shannon, also known as Q, and my very good friend, Norma Page, who will share with you a little bit about themselves. After their welcome, we will hear from Alfonso Porter, Editor-in-Chief for Denver Urban Spectrum. Good evening. My name is Norma J. Page, and first and foremost, I am a wife, a mother, a grandmother, community servant, and also the vice president for the 100 Men Who Cook. I am so honored to be here this evening to present to you phenomenal African-Americans who make a difference in our community. Hope, helping other people every day. You are in store for something great. And now I'd like to introduce to you my co-host who I've been sharing the stage with for several years. He is such a delight and I'm sure you'll enjoy him this evening as we have in years in the past. Turning it over to Quincy Shannon. Thank you, Norma. Greetings and salutations. My name is Quincy Shannon, most commonly known as Q, and I can't believe it is another year, another opportunity for us to highlight those in our community that are worth mentioning. I am a Denver native, I'm a son, a grandson, and also a father. And it is one of my most cherished opportunities each year to be a part of this momentous occasion. And so for each of those who are being highlighted this evening, congratulations. And I'm so very thankful that we have a chance to share with the world the contributions in which you are doing. My name is Alfonso Porter, Editor-in-Chief of the Denver Urban Spectrum, a multi-award-winning publication based here in Denver for the last 37 years. We want you to know that we take our, our editorial decisions quite seriously. It is a role that we understand and we relish. We have a number of issues confronting the African-American community, not just here in Denver and in Colorado, but nationwide. Chief among them at this time is the mental health of our young people. For example, according to Time Magazine, the a suicide rate among young black males has more than doubled since 2013. And for our young girls, the news is even worse. We're looking at a 182% increase in the number of suicide and suicide attempts among our young women from 2001 to 2017. Secondarily, we're looking at the suppression of our vote as we move into this election year and into the presidential election in 2024. Nine states at this time have placed restrictive laws on the books that will make it harder, more difficult for African-Americans to cast our ballot. We also have to confront the loss of our wealth. Since 2018, since 2008, we have lost more than half of our accumulated wealth in the United States. And finally, education. Our black students stand at the bottom of every standard measure in public schools today. It is a crisis that needs to be addressed if we're going to have the bright future that all of us know that we can have. So thank you very much for, for this program. And we look forward um, to much success in the future. Congratulations to all winners tonight. Thank you, Alfonso. I must say those are very sobering statistics.
statistics, yet it's information that we must have. And again, a reason why the Denver Urban Spectrum is so important and valuable in our community. But now I'd like to switch gears. Uh, we want to introduce to you Miss Stephanie Hancock. And after her selection, you will meet our first group of 2022 African Americans who make a difference. Now, Ms. Hancock says she's loved music and theater as long as she can remember. She considers herself a work of living art in progress. She's a wife, mother, writer, and believer, and says, I am so grateful that God, the ultimate creator, artist, musician, poet, and sculptor gave me a voice to sing. She says, like most people, she's got strong opinions on a variety of topics. And that's why her blog is so important to her because it gives her an opportunity to inspire, encourage, engage, and maybe provoke people to look at life in a different way. So now, without further ado, I present to you Miss Stephanie Hancock with the La La Song. Penny candy, jumping rope, things we used to do. Waiting bus stops, playing hopscotch, the innocence of you. Now we're older, world is colder, come to know the truth. Life is pressing, always stressing, all you see is you. Reminiscing of what is missing, can we start again? Never ending, stop pretending that we know what's next. Life is fleeting, what we're seeking can't be bought or sold. Grains of sand blow through our hand like time, no one can hold.
Amanda Gordon, owner Gojo Auto, co-founder Women of Color Automotive Network. Amanda Gordon is the first black woman in Colorado to secure an automotive dealer's license. Through her business, her most notable contribution to the African-American community over the past year has been bringing awareness to the auto industry for people of color. She also provided a $10,000 grant for startup costs to Trunk Desk, which won the grand prize of the Black Business Initiative Pitch Black Shark Tank Business Program. Gordon has a staff of 10 that is 80% African-American and bridging the financial literacy gap with car purchases. Gojo Auto was a past sponsor of the Denver Urban Spectrum African-Americans Who Make a Difference Black History Month program celebration. When asked why she takes an active role, Gordon says, I take an active role because it's my obligation to give as much as I take from the community. As a business owner, she feels that ownership of businesses, housing, land in organizations is a big challenge facing the african-american community she also says representation and education us by us will be a great equalizer gordon says in the future i would like to accomplish expanding my automotive company so that we can reach more opportunity zones in our community and have a greater economic impact she would like to be remembered as one who changed lives around her so generations to come have a head start and a better understanding of economics than she did early on. First, I'd like to thank the committee at the Denver Urban Spectrum for even acknowledging me for this award. Thank you so much. What this award means to me is community. I've been able to build a business around a community that has uplifted me and supported me from day one. And without them, I would not be here. Thank you to those that have come before me and have helped build me up, the Sandra Youngs, the Kamal Martinez's, and everyone else involved that helped get this award. Thank you to my team at Gojo Auto, and most importantly from the bottom of my heart, thank you to my family, my mother, my son, and everyone else who's helped be a part of this award. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Barry Overton, international real estate advisor, Gulf War veteran, retired police detective, author, and speaker. Barry Overton is best known for helping buyers and sellers with their real estate needs. He says, I like to make a dream of home ownership a reality for as many families as possible. I have managed to find different programs and companies that assist my clients to maximize their opportunities in the fast-paced real estate market. Over the past year, Overton served on the Cabinet Committee for Housing and Urban Development for State Senator James Coleman to advise on specific urgent issues affecting the community in relation to housing in the real estate market. He says his purpose in life is simple, service to others. He served his country in the military. He protected and served his community as a police officer. All of his businesses have been service-based. Overton says, our biggest challenge is realizing our own greatness. As a people, we have endured torture, enslavement, racism, financial and educational oppression, yet still continue to rise. To overcome more than 400 years of this treatment at every level, Something special is clearly inside each and every one of us waiting to be unleashed. Once we, as a community, realize we can accomplish anything, we will create a tidal wave of victory that will become the standard greatness that we operate under. And there is no going back to average living after that. Overton wants to be remembered as a guy whose grind was as big as his dream. 
And while I'm here, I want to create more visionaries that execute a plan to realize their wildest dreams. It's an honor to be able to accept this award and be recognized by the community that you serve. And it's also an honor to be recognized by the Denver Urban Spectrum because of the rich history that it has and so many people that have been recognized through that magazine over the, the past so many years. And it's uh, with me, I just wanna be able to thank those that have been able to get me to this point that I've been in life because I wasn't able to do it by myself. And there's mentors like Rod Smith and people that I've worked with uh, that my support staff that work in behind the scenes uh, like Tracy Wilkins and Jawan Scott Peterson and Kel Roberts that are able to make me look good in front of the rest of the world but there's so many working parts that are going on behind the scenes. This next honoree is very dear to me and has supported everything I've done in the community when I reached out to her. Benilda Benny Samuels, Chief Reimagining Officer, Imaginable LLC. Benny Samuels' 30-year career has been creating, leading, and expanding programs and organizations that open access and opportunity for individuals, families and children living in poverty and for those living furthest from opportunity. She says, my work has been evident throughout Health and Human Services. Over the past five years, Samuels has created access to the best maternal health program in the country for young mothers living in poverty. She also led the family planning project that reduced unintended pregnancies in Colorado by 40%. Last year, she directed more than a million dollars in credit to black indigenous people of color leaders and organizations. She takes an active role because she can and says, I am certain that all my community needs is an honest opportunity and I love my people. She feels that obstacles to health, healing, and wellness are the biggest threats to the African-American community. We need to redefine who we are, our stories, our habits, our rituals. We need to shift and straighten our mindset, moving from plantation to freedom. We need to rebuild our communities, know our neighbors' names, support our kids, and take care of one another. In the future, she'd like to serve as an anchor and support system for the new generation of social justice and community leaders. She would like to be remembered as an anchor for others, as someone who lived free and authentically, as a friend, sister, and supporter. Hi, I'm Benny Samuels, and I am so grateful to have been one of the recipients of the African Americans Who Make a Difference Award by the Urban Spectrum this year. And this award is incredibly um, special to me because, because it tells me a lot about the Denver community. It tells me that as a community and as a world, we still believe in gratitude, we still believe in saying thank you, uh, and that we still are watching. We're watching what we're all doing and, um, and that we're taking the time to say thank you for what you're doing for our community. Now, nobody does uh, their work to receive thanks necessarily, but it certainly is nice to know that the world is grateful, uh, that my community is grateful, and so I want to thank the Urban Spectrum for always holding space for our narrative in the black community, and I definitely want to thank them for this wonderful award. Brandon Bruce, Senior Project Manager, Dish Network. CEO Distinction Group Project Management Company, 
CEO Harlem of the West, Uka. Brandon Bruce is the Vice President of Denver Alumni Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Incorporated, Co-Chair of the Denver African American Philanthropist, Board Chair for Giving Back 303, and Past President of the Denver Urban League Young Professionals. Bruce was recently awarded the National Urban League Young Professionals YP Honors, which one of the most prestigious awards in the nation recognizing community service by young professionals. Through his service with the Denver Urban League Young Professionals, Bruce collaborated with Odell Brewing in Five Points to create a signature brew, resulting in more than $10,000 in donations for the national organization. He chooses to be active due to his rearing in the Church of God in Christ, Baptist Church, and his strong faith in God. Bruce says, it is his guiding scripture, Matthew 5:16, that says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. He says, Accessing financial education and the freedom it creates is the most significant challenge to African Americans. I believe that as a whole, African Americans could be better positioned in this country if we understood better how to use money as a tool to create, replicate, and sustain general wealth. Bruce would like to grow Giving Back 303 to be a sustainable international African-American-led disaster relief nonprofit, own a tobacco and nicotine-free hookah franchise, and become a multi-million dollar contributing philanthropist. Bruce says, I would like to be remembered as a progressing but not perfect man of God, who was a lender, philanthropist, lawyer, and business owner who answered the call to uplift his community for the betterment of others and generations to come. First, I'd like to thank Ms. B. Harris and the Urban Spectrum so much for awarding me the African Americans Who Make a Difference Award for 2022. I am very proud to be able to stand on the shoulders of people who have come before me, and I hope that my shoulders will be able to bear the weight of those to come after me. Last but not least, I would like to give thanks and honor to God from whom I know all blessings flow. Thank you. Chad J. Nash, PhD, owner of the Real Estate Doctor LLC, owner and CEO, the Read Doc Group, owner and CEO regarding Works CRM platform. Chad Nash is known as a lifelong educator with leadership positions within Denver Public Schools and as a native of far Northeast Denver, specifically Montbello. He was the number one ranked producing African-American residential real estate agent within Greater Metro Denver in 2020 and 2021 with a brokerage real estate team of 30 agents of color. During 2021, Nash served as vice chair of the Inclusion and Diversity and Equity Committee of the South Metro Denver Realtor Association. He has been teaching the Pathways to Ownership program that prepares Black and Brown Americans for home ownership. His Doing Real Estate for Good charitable giving program donated more than $50,000 to organizations serving Black, Brown, and low-income communities. Nash takes an active role because strong leaders and mentors took time to help him and his peers, and that was to change their life trajectories and accomplish many goals. So he sees it as his duty to serve the youth and community in the same manner. Nash strongly feels the largest disparities between African-American communities and other communities are property ownership rates and strategic financial literacy. He believes these can be resolved with more education around real estate planning, estate planning, and investing in money management. Work also needs to be accomplished on a macro level to devise and advise policies on affordability 
and ensuring that the black community has access to ownership and home ownership programs. Future goals include building the largest minority owned and operated real estate brokerage in Colorado, establishing a far Northeast land trust to protect the neighborhoods from gentrification and increase affordable housing, and establishing a foundation focusing on educational attainment, healthy lifestyles, and property ownership. Nash says, I simply want to be remembered as a man who loved his community and all its members and to leave a lasting legacy of impact. It's an absolute honor and a privilege to be recognized as a 2022 African American who made a difference in Denver. This award for me, being a Denver native, I've grown up reading Denver Urban Spectrum and I remember as a young person always looking through this newspaper at those who made a difference in our community and admiring and saying to myself, one day I wish that I could have you know, one fourth of an impact that they've had. So today to sit here and be recognized amongst these great leaders within the city is very humbling and it's a true honor and a pleasure. Um, for me, this is not about me. I truly want to be a, a community servant, and I'm very humbled uh, that the community recognizes me as leaving an impact on their lives and in the work that we do as a collective. Thank you. Shartasia Miller, Secretary, NAACP Aurora Branch, CT Coaching with Results. Shartasia Miller has been the NAACP Adult Branch Secretary in Aurora since November 2015. She has worked tirelessly to encourage NAACP membership and the general public to register to vote in local and national elections. She's an avid supporter of the organization's vision to ensure a society in which all individuals have equal rights without racial discrimination. Miller's community involvement includes serving as an advisor of the Aurora Youth Commission, City of Aurora MLK Jr. Commemoration Committee member, 2019 Ambassador of the Aurora Chamber of Commerce, and Board Chair for the Struggle of Love Foundation. Since 2018, Miller's business has provided toiletries during an annual Thanksgiving food drive. Miller has been recognized for her community service and work recently receiving the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Humanitarian Award and the City of Aurora Community Spirit Award. Miller feels two big challenges face the African-American community. At this point, it is a pandemic with many different variants being added at an accelerated pace. We must get vaccinated. We must get educated on how to stay safe and wear our masks, she says. Homelessness is the other challenge, she says because housing costs have gone up so much, making housing unaffordable for anyone with a, the basic income level. The solution is to let more voices be heard and for people to get involved and vote. I want the legacy of love, compassion, respect, and real forgiving to be the legacy that I leave, she says, and want to be remembered as someone who always had time as well as her smile, integrity, compassion, and daily life of prayer. And the quote, I am enough. I am so honored to receive this award from the Denver Urban Spectrum. This award means a lot to me because it is something that I've never had and never achieved before. Um, it shows that when you put in the work and you are faithful to what you do, you are rewarded by the word. And so letting young people know, continue to strive, continue to do what you need to do, because eventually your work will speak for itself. I want to thank Ms. B. She is such an awesome and phenomenal woman in the Denver community. And I want to thank her staff for just acknowledging me and presenting me with this award. It means the world to me, and I will cherish it for the rest of my life. I want to thank those that actually nominated me um, for this award. 
and it's just gonna make me to strive to do more and more in the community because there is a need to do more. I just love this next Henri. She's very near and dear and special to me. Deborah A. Powell, owner and fashion designer of Deborah's Designs Made with Love. Deborah Powell is best known as a fashion designer and community volunteer. Over the past year, she volunteered and assisted the Colorado Battalion Cotillion Incorporated. Additionally, her volunteer service over the last five years as an ambassador for the 100 Men Who Cook assisted in planning and fundraising for grassroots organizations such as the Music and Leadership Institute, Boys Day, Urban Spectrum Youth Foundation, the Retired Enlisted Association, and Struggle of Love Foundation. I strongly believe that taking an active role in one's community is the most important service I can provide, not only by giving back and paying it forward, but also to help see my community move forward. Powell feels the biggest challenges facing the African-American community are working together as a people to help one another achieve goals. We can resolve this by working together in our families, communities, and places of employment. Future goals include supporting other grassroots groups who are truly working hard and making a difference in our community. Powell says, I would like to be remembered as someone who inspired others to give of themselves to the world and also as a pioneer who helped to provide a better future for our children. Hello, my name is Deborah Powell. I'm a fashion designer, seamstress, and community service volunteer. First of all, I am so grateful to receive the AAWMAD Award 2022. I would also like to thank B. Harris and the Denver Urban Spectrum. I am so thrilled to be here today. I would like to say I, I am so grateful to receive the African Americans Who Make a Difference Award, which recognizes my service in the community. The Denver community is so special to me, and I am so grateful for the people that live in it. They bring so much joy into my heart. So I feel inspired to give back by volunteering in support of our youth, the community, and the people in it. I am so honored to be among the award honorees. It is an honor to be recognized by a group that I think so highly of. Thank you so much for all your hard work in this, and please accept my deepest appreciation. Wow, wow, wow. That was incredible being able to see so many things that so many people are doing in our community. And I'd be remiss if I didn't just pause for a second and say, that's my dog. Because if we were in person, there were several individuals in which I would be saying that after them. And so to my very good friend, Brandon Bruce, Amanda Gordon, and many of the other awardees from part one, congratulations. But don't worry, we're not finished yet. We have more of this program coming up after a quick interlude from my main man, Theo Wilson. That's right, you guys may be seeing this guy on national television, and I'm so proud to say I went to elementary school with Theo Wilson, his sister. And so, Brother Sid, I know you are just peacock proud of your son as we get ready to hear his poem, Still I Rise. And right after these words from Theo Wilson, we'll be able to go to part two of our awardees in which we have somebody who may be under the age of 10 years old being able to win an award this year. I know you guys are waiting to see who that may be and one of the best DJs on this side of the Mississippi. So go ahead, stay tuned as we get ready.
and still we rise. Maya told me of the greatness we'll become. You know, you could take the black man out of Africa, his heart beats still the drum. And America rose to the rhythm of my resilience. History's greatest survival story written while they were killing us by the millions, still black and brilliant. Nothing supposedly inferior survived the march from the interior. Plus the ships, whips, and shackles, plantations trying to put fear in us. But if you had to resort to whipping me viciously just to stop me from literacy, then this deadly pen is gonna be the enemy to white supremacy. Rigging every system against me just to cop your green. The homie asked Diana Ross, you are not supreme. Imagine handcuffing a boxer and he still defeats you. With half the pieces on the chessboard, I just killed your queen, dude. If I slammed every door on black folk and they dare to squeeze through, then it's just like Harvey Weinstein. I'd be scared of me too, cause still we rise. Burning bright is the eye of God when it bang light through the void. As black as the death of a son. Black like the kinks in Harriet Tubman's hair. Reborn is the rifling grooves inside Huey P. Newton's gun. I'm a slave sorrow dancing off Ray Charles' fingertips. I'm the cotton thorns in Mahalia Jackson's gospel riffs. I am Louis' trumpet blending voodoo and Christ through cracked lips. I am MJ moonwalking over broken memories of blackness. I'm surviving self-hatred even when preached from the pulpit. The condomate Africans burn their kinks till so they straighten to bull whips. I'm the heroine that Miles Davis injected back into jazz. I'm the fire Muhammad Ali kept in the back of his jab. A raised glove with lightning flashing through the monsoon and rains. The first African word I ever learned was Bumaye. And if you look at how far we come, you'll be so shocked that it'll leave you breathless. Like the ghost of Thomas Jefferson at Obama's re-election. Give me the alchemy of a rapper taking the lead from the bullets inside of his body and melting them down. I want melting them down. I want melting them down in the platinum records for us. It's our Bob Marley rolling up and smoking Willie Lynch's ashes and inhaling the words of the first verse of Exodus, movement of your people. And this poem is dedicated to the in denial black Americans that travel to Africa every time they step in front of their reflection, to the Latinos who carry African stolen gold in their complexions, to the Congolese women who were systemically violated and left alive due to tribal warfare, and them white kids who would rather die than repeat the crimes of their father's affairs. Stand with us. Sing a freedom song so clear that it shatters the receiver inside Dr. King's wiretap phone. Piercing the clouds and back down to the sound reverberates with the titanium of Malcolm's backbone. Till Africans rise up from the Atlantic like goosebumps from your skin. Lightning flashing like the flame from Huey's gun. Burning bright as the eye of God when it bang light through the void. It's black. It's the death of a sun. And still we rise. Happy Juneteenth. <laughs> Denise Burgess, President and CEO, Burgess Services Incorporated. Denise Burgess is best known for her community development within the Denver Urban Renewal Authority, as well as being a part of almost all major projects in downtown Denver. This has made Burgess Services a powerful resource for Denver's urban development. Over the last five years, her accomplishments include the development of the City and County of Denver Justice Center and the Westin Hotel at Denver International Airport. Burgess Services was awarded a $39.6 million mechanical contract at the airport, the largest contract ever awarded to a Black-owned business. Burgess says, as an African-American woman in a male-dominated industry, I have been exposed to women leaders who take on leadership roles that may present challenges and they were successful at it. This motivated me to step to the platform and use the voice that was given to me to encourage other women to do the same. She feels the biggest challenge facing the African-American community is workforce readiness. We are all taught that we have to attend a university. However, there are also great opportunities in the trades. There are opportunities both as an owner and as a professional service employee. 
long-term community sustainability starts with livable wage jobs today. The construction industry offers that. In the future, she would like to develop construction certification courses that would lead to immediate employment. Burgess would like to be remembered as a forward-thinking first mover in Colorado. I want young Black women to remember that we have options to be included in whatever industry we want. Hi, my name is Denise Burgess, President and CEO of Burgess Services. And this award means to me legacy. From being the grandchild, grandchild of South Carolina sharecroppers and ministers to my mother and father starting our 48-year-old company a generation ago and now carrying that on. And during that, legacy history has always been about our community, our black community, and giving back and helping. So for me, this is the highest honor because it comes from my community here in Colorado. This next honoree is also very special to me. We've worked closely together and she's a real follow through type person who never says no. Ellery Archer, MBA, BSN, RN, nurse aid instructor and program coordinator for Cherry Creek Innovative Campus. Ellery Archer is best known as the convener of resources and for creating innovative health and wellness solutions that address the healthcare disparities and inequities that affect the Black community. She has hosted and sponsored health and wellness fairs, workshops, and educational seminars that promote mental health awareness and knowledge for creating a healthier lifestyle. During the past year, she promoted community resources for COVID-19 vaccinations, ensuring that our communities had access and knowledge from healthcare providers that look like our African-American community. Archer says, as a registered nurse, educator, and servant leader, I choose to take an active role as this is my calling passion and duty to help others. She feels some of the biggest challenges facing the African American community are education and health disparities, attainment of progressive policies and wealth literacy, and lack of opportunity for youth ages 16 to 25. In her opinion, the best way to resolve these challenges is with meaningful, collective impact of African-American organizations converging toward a uniformity of common goals. In the future, I would like to plan, build, and implement the Black Neighborhood Innovative Centers of Excellence, Be Nice, a one-stop shop that would house all our community needs and resources under a unified roof. She would like to be remembered as a black woman who was a good daughter, sister, mother, friend, and a devoted healthcare provider, educator, and philanthropist who gave unselfishly and was compassionate about her community. Hello, and thank you. First, I would like to give honor to God, who without him, none of this would be possible, as well as my parents, Ms. Julia Brown and James Archer, as well as my ancestors, whose shoulders I stand on before you, as well as B. Harris and the Denver Urban Spectrum and the community, the African American community. I just wanna say thank you and for you recognizing me and giving me this honorable recognition, a little girl from the projects who never knew that she could be honored in this light, who never knew that she could accomplish what she set out to accomplish. And when others told her that she wasn't good enough or didn't see her potential, 
And for those that did see my potential, I want to say thank you. And I want to say to those young girls and boys that are looking at this video and looking at this live stream, I just want to say, let my story be a part of your testimony. A little girl from the projects who didn't have anything growing up, who didn't know anything about going to college, but who mother and father pushed her and told her to go seek out those resources, to go find those teachers and those counselors who believe in you, who aspire to help you. And I want to say that to those young girls and boys. Seek out your teachers. I'm now a teacher at Cherry Creek School Districts. Come and see me. Those are those community resources. And if someone tell you you're not good enough, you, don't, you won't be good enough, that's a lie. Don't let them take your story. Have your voice. And when they say, if you're a product of your environment, look at me. I'm a product of my environment. I, my family didn't have the money to send me to college. I had to go out there and pay for my own way to college. So again, let my story be a part of your testimony. And again, I just wanted to thank B. Harris and the Denver Urban Spectrum and the community and all of those organizations that I give my talents and services to and saying thank you and for seeing my potential and my leadership. Kamal Martinez, AKA DJ K-Tone, founder and CEO of K-Tone Cares Foundation, DJ, entertainer, influencer, philanthropist. Kamal Martinez is best known throughout the Metro Denver area as D -D -D DJ K-Tone for his contributions to the music scene as well as his cultural and philanthropic work. He established K-Tone Cares Foundation in May 2021 during the pandemic and launched four successful block parties in the Park Hill neighborhood over the summer. In collaboration with the Educational Credits Management Corporation, the College Place, Colorado, he presented successful financial aid, federal student aid resource fair for high school students and their parents. K-Tone's most notable contribution has been presenting the DJ K-Tone's annual book award where he has provided approximately 20 monetary scholarships to high school seniors. He says, I grew up in the same environment like a lot of the youth today. And because of my blessings, I feel it is my responsibility to give back to my community. DJ K-Tone believes one of the biggest challenges facing the African-American community is the stigma associated with mental health, especially how it impacts black men. He says, I believe the resolution is an open and honest dialogue to provide a safe environment to bring the issues to the forefront. Future plans include growing his foundation so he can continue to provide opportunities for the African-American community, as well as those that are equally impacted economically and socially. DJ K-Tone says, I'd like to be remembered as someone who actually came from it saw a need, took an action, made a difference for the community and for the culture. How you doing? Kamal Martinez, AKA DJ K-Tone. And I wanna thank the Denver Urban Spectrum for this amazing award. First, it means a lot to me just from, because of who it's from, Denver Urban Spectrum and, and Ms. B. Um, has been the staple in the community for so long and to be honored and, and acknowledged by her and, and, and the staff at the Denver Urban Spectrum means a lot to me and to even be acknowledged for the work I've been doing, the legacy I've been building um, is, is just an amazing feat for me. Um, I, I really want to give a big, big shout out and a big special, the biggest thank you to my mother for, for uh, supporting me, for sticking by me, for pushing me and motivating me to even be the man I am today. Thank you to my family and to my kids for, for the motivation and encouragement every day. My support system, my, my whole, my staff, my K-Tone Cares Foundation staff, everyone who's been in my corner for all these years, I, I, I appreciate it and, and we're not gonna stop. The vision is, is, is real, it's alive, and I just really wanna thank the Denver Urban Spectrum 
for acknowledging me as an African American who makes a difference in my city, in my community, and my culture. Thank you. Dr. Marjorie B. Lewis, behavioral economist, mental health and wellness professional. Dr. Marjorie B. Lewis is best known in the Denver community as a mental health professional who trains, supervises, and develops others. Over the past year, she has supervised and facilitated the credentialing of African and African-American mental and behavioral health professionals. Over the past five years, she has facilitated and supervised the creation of at least five African-American owned and operated behavioral health services facilities. When asked why she takes an active role, Lewis says, I have been blessed with powerful credentials and I know they are to be used as tools to unpack the awareness and insight of as many of my people as I can reach. Since I am just one person, it just makes sense to help create other professionals committed to the same work. She feels the biggest challenge facing the African American community is the lack of capacity to see ourselves for who we are. We will be much improved when we can see ourselves as a connected community, a unique culture with unique contributions to this country. As long as we emulate the ways of status quo without fully understanding A, who we are, B, our role in the evolution of the United States of America as a truly exceptional nation, and C, our unlimited potential. Oppression will be the biggest challenge faced in our African American community. She looks forward to becoming a best-selling author and a nationally recognized behavioral economist. Lewis says, I would like to be remembered as a locksmith, unlocking the barriers to our universal peace of mind so our capacities live up to our greatest potentials as infinite and eternal beings. Hello. I simply want to say how much gratitude I have for the acknowledgement of community service in the form of this award from the Urban Spectrum. I have known of the Urban Spectrum for decades and it is truly exciting to be part of the family in relation to recognition for being an African American who makes a difference. Again, I simply want to say thank you very much as I continue my work serving the behavioral health needs of our community. Michaelia White, anchor, reporter, media personality, CBS Denver. Michaelia White is best known in the Denver community as being the voice for the voiceless in her storytelling. As a journalist, she says, I get to illuminate the stories of communities all across Denver and help spark change. She's a great listener and comforts people in their most valuable and thrilling moments in life. She says, it is powerful and I am honored. White has written and produced several stories highlighting African-Americans in the Denver metro area. Everything from Denver's mayor to a football player who has overcame adversity as a kid from Montbello and the executive director of the Kwanzaa Committee, working to preserve the holiday after COVID split people apart. After 10 years in the industry and being a recognized African-American female news professional, she says representation matters. And using my profession to shine light on topics that matter in the community, it matters for little boys and girls to see that they can achieve their dreams too. As a child, she was told by a teacher that she was a student who talked too much in school. Wright's response is, I've always been a people lover and it does my heart good to use my voice to help others. 
future plans include mentoring a new generation of leaders and helping them to discover their full potential in the field of journalism. White says she would like to be remembered as a kind, compassionate, passionate, loving, strong, and intentional person. I'm Michaela Kelly White, and um, I am an anchor and reporter with CBS Denver, and I am just overjoyed. I'm so honored to be receiving this award um, and be nominated and receive the award with so many other people, 13 other individuals who are doing outstanding work in the community. We're talking uh, CEOs, business owners, people who are blazing trails. It's, it's incredible to know that um, that I'm considered among those people. It's it's amazing, you know, and to know that <sighs> collect my thoughts here. <laughs> to know that little boys, little girls can look up and see someone that looks like them on television. I know that they can do it with a lot of hard work, a lot of perseverance. Um, it's a real privilege and an honor. So thank you so much for this for thinking of me um and i even had <laughs> i was told that these are my initials so i didn't even know that this was going to be such a such an elaborate award so i'm just grateful and um want to from the bottom of my heart express gratitude for um, the community honoring me in this way it's all about being able to give back and um grateful that i can can do that Nikki Swarn, General Manager, Program Director, 104.7 The Drop. Nikki Swarn is a conduit for change in the leadership roles that African American women play in media and entertainment. She is responsible for establishing a new public radio format that features an all African American air staff. Swarn's contributions include supporting the LGBTQ community, the unhoused, and those struggling with mental health. She creates radio programs that focus on community issues and develops community engagement events ranging from food and toy drives to educational opportunities. Swan says, as a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, service to our community remains at the heart of everything I do. She takes an active role because she has always considered herself a servant leader. It is important to support my community with grace and gratitude, she says. Swarn says the biggest challenges facing the African-American community are holding on to our heritage and remaining connected to the past while moving into a space of innovation. We must continue to recognize future leaders and provide them with the space and opportunities to flourish with support and love. It is critical. She would like to be remembered as a genuine spirit who was proud to serve her community and always willing to share her journey and her wisdom. Exemplified a brand of leadership that was caring and composed, confident and fun with an unwavering commitment towards the success of her colleagues and coworkers. And someone who loves her family, friends fiercely and always wore a smile I am so very honored to be receiving this gorgeous award. Look at this, it's so stunning. Um, and to be honored by the Urban Spectrum as an African-American who makes a difference. I have to thank my crew uh, at 104.7 The Drop. They make my job so easy and so seamless. I wanna thank all my folks at Rocky Mountain Public Media for their belief in me as a leader. I would not be anywhere without my great mentorship of Becky Taylor. I love you, Becky. Thank you so much. You were the first African-American woman program director, and I am the second following in your lead instead. And lastly, I have to thank my family, my brother and his two kids, Kasai and Jediah, I love you, his wife, Nicole, and my father. Dad, I love you so very much. You gave me the energy, the belief that I could do this. Watching you be an African-American leader has been wonderful. Getting to see you be a leader in banking, the first African-American vice president at Rocky Mountain Bank Card Systems, I knew the path could be cleared for me. Thank you so much, I love you. And to my mother who is not with us, 
May you rest in peace and thank you for being my champion and being an African-American woman who also made a difference. Asani McClure, owner, Rain High Shine Lip Gloss, owner, Sugar Water. Asani McClure is an aspiring and inspiring nine-year-old youth entrepreneur with two businesses. This fourth grader at Iowa Elementary in Aurora is the owner of Rain High Shine Lip Gloss and Sugar Water Beverages. She started her lip gloss business at the age of eight creating a flavor of the month for the month of May in honor of Lupus Awareness Month. She held a fundraiser and donated the proceeds to Purple Healers Incorporated. A few months later, she started her flavored lemonade business, Sugar Water Beverages, which are available in two Denver stores. Over the past year, between school and her businesses, McClure spends her time speaking and inspiring youth about starting their own businesses. She is very involved in the community. As a member of her church's outreach team, she also finds time to feed the homeless and provide clothing. McClure says she takes an active role because I want to inspire you to show them that there are positive things to do. She also says gun violence is a big challenge that can be resolved by getting more positive role models involved hands on with addressing these issues. Future goals include having her products manufactured and distributed to stores all over the world, her own storefront and youth empowering events. She wants to continue to excel in school and graduate at the top of her class. McClure says, I would like to be remembered as a caring person who loved to help out people in need. I want to be an inspiring and positive role model and motivator for you. Hey guys, my name is Asani Ray McClure and I am very honored to accept this award and I want to thank the Denver Urban Spect Spectrum for giving me the opportunity to get this award and I want to thank God, my parents, my grandparents and the rest of my family because they are my backbones. And I also want to thank Mr. J at Crown Market for opening his door and giving me the opportunity to sell my sugar water. And also Chambers Place Liquors for letting me sell my sugar water in their store. And also the Hair Teak for carrying my lip gloss. And also I want to thank Soil Shakers Ministry for supporting my business and the rest of my supporters. And I just want to continue to inspire the youth and help my community and give out to my community. Every year, I am amazed with the Denver community and the many individuals who are making a difference in the lives of others. I want to once again congratulate and say thank you to this year's honorees for their work and service to the Denver community. I hope you have enjoyed the program thus far, but it's not over yet. Each year in February for Black History Month, we honor an individual on the cover who has earned a place in history for standing up for African Americans. This year, that woman is Carlotta Wallace Lanier. Little Rock Nine's youngest member. You can read her story in this month's Denver Urban Spectrum and listen to the complete interview with Ruby Jones on our YouTube channel. But before we look at her historic journey, I'd like to introduce actress and singer Vicki Lynn Reynolds. Many remember her from the movie Friday when she played Joanne, Chris Tucker's mom, and recognized her for her famous line, make it enough. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What's this? This ain't enough. Make it enough. I first met Vicki Lynn when she was in Denver performing as the singer in Bringing the Noise, Bringing the Funk. For the last several years, she has been working on her play about Hattie McDaniels, Hattie, What I Need You to Know. She will sing a closing tribute song to all the honorees. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce two very good friends. It's Vicki Lynn Reynolds, 
followed with a tribute to the wonderful Carlotta Waz Lanier. If you believe, maybe just a little each day, that peace and love will lead the way. If you have faith that somehow a spirit will rise, Turn all the hate into kindness, into beauty will fly. Listen to voices throughout the land that will speak of those same dreams and make you just raise up your hands, calling all dreamers. Dreamers, show us the way, calling all dreamers, calling all dreamers, dream for today, dream for today, if you can feel something deep inside of you. Just listen to voices throughout the land that'll speak of those same dreams that make you raise up your hands, calling all dreamers. Yes, I am. I'm calling all dreamers. I'm calling all dreamers. I'm calling your dreamers. I'm a call. Hey! 
Carlotta Waz Lanier, at age 14, was the youngest of the nine courageous black students known as the Little Rock Nine who integrated Little Rock Central High School in 1957. The integration of the Arkansas High School was a catalyzing event in the American Civil Rights Movement, testing the landmark decision by the U.S. Supreme Court declaring segregation in public schools unconstitutional. Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka, 1954. Lanier and her fellow students initially were escorted to Central High School by the 101st Airborne Division of the U.S. Army and later the Arkansas National Guard. Daily, they endured verbal taunts and physical harassment while at school. Lanier was one of three Little Rock Line students to return to Central High School after the closing of all Little Rock High Schools in 1958 and 1959 and became the first black woman to walk across the Central High School stage to receive her diploma. After graduating from Central High School in 1960, she studied at Michigan State University for two years before moving to Colorado. She enrolled at the University of Northern Colorado and earned her bachelor's degree in 1968. She, along with the other members of the Little Rock Nine, is the recipient of the nation's highest civilian honor, the Congressional Gold Medal, presented by President Bill Clinton in 1999, the prestigious Spingarm Medal from the NAACP and the Lincoln Leadership Prize Award by the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library Foundation. She was inducted into the Colorado Women's Hall of Fame and the National Women's Hall of Fame in 2015. Her story is presented in the History Makers, the nation's largest African-American video oral history archive. Marquette University conferred the Pierre Marquette Discovery Award on the Little Rock Nine on February 9th, 2010, which is its highest honor. Others only to receive this award were Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Mother Teresa, Reverend Carl Rayner, and the Apollo 11 astronauts. She is the recipient of five honorary doctorate degrees. Lanera has documented her journey in a mighty long way, my journey to justice at Little Rock Central High. She remains active in numerous community organizations in Colorado and serves as the Emeritus President of the Little Rock Nine Foundation, a financial aid and mentoring organization dedicated to ensuring equal access to education for children of color. Uh, this is Carlotta Walsh Lanier, and this month, being Black History Month, I was featured on the cover of Denver Urban Spectrum. And uh, I would like to thank B for being a persistent advocate in reaching all of Denver and the African-American community in particular in providing an avenue for us to learn. I'd like to thank uh, Ruby Jones for the professional interview and your integrity in writing my article. And all of the Denver Urban Spectrum for the awesome job you do. The gift of record was presently received and I thank you again. What a wonderful, fantastic evening we've had. Sharing time with you, but more importantly, just seeing the hope that resides in our community. I was so excited to see some of the people that I know that are special to me, that their work has been acknowledged. Benny, uh, Kamau, Deborah, Ellery, I don't want to name names, but I tell you, those are some special people to me. And I was so pleased to learn 
of some people that I had no idea that they existed. And that's why this event is so important to our community. That's why I'm always so excited to participate. And it's just been great. You said it right. This community is special and it is incredible. When we think about where we're at, where we're going, but also having an opportunity to reflect on the past. I know I've been looking in history books and seeing what the Little Rock Nine was to our community and then realizing that we have ties to that historic event right here in Denver, Colorado, where there are some who do not believe that we not only exist, but that we have been changing and making history. And that history has not been lost because there are people even today continuing that legacy. And that's one thing that I love about the urban spectrum. They are highlighting those who need to be highlighted each and every year, going through the different parts of our community and finding someone as young as nine years old to someone in our senior years and bring them all together and saying, you matter. And in a world like the one that we live in, it just feels good to know that there are still people who are making a difference. Scratch that. There are African-Americans making a difference. Scratch that. There are amazing people still doing some incredible things. And so thank you, B. Harris, and all those at the Urban Spectrum. And I hope to see you guys next year, maybe hopefully next time in person. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. I truly appreciate it. Um, as you can see, we are still presenting virtually, which brings up yet another major concern for our community and one that the Denver Urban Spectrum has been uh, the vanguard in getting the word out about the COVID-19 virus, its uh, impacts on our community, um, the lack of health care that pervades our community, and what we need to do about it. Stay tuned. We've got more coming, and we will keep you informed. We have a few special acknowledgments uh, that this event would not have been possible without them. Bobby Wells of Bobby Wells Music, Dan Honoré III, David Kinney of MSU Denver, Norman Harris of the Holleran Group, Stephanie Hancock, Theo Wilson, Vicki Lynn Reynolds, Jody Gilbert of Color Graphics. Thank you so very much for your support. And it is so important in keeping this program going. And again, thank you. And before we sign off, I'd like to always thank Norma and Q and Alfonso for participating in this program. It's exciting to see what's going on in the D Denver community. And before we close out, I'd also like to thank our sponsors, the Asphalt Foundation, Misty Oss and Buttons from the Heart, the Denver Botanic Gardens, Designs by Deborah Gojo Auto, and Metropolitan State University. Till then, we'll see you all next year. Bye. Bye. Right now, you here? Been great.